uh, hello, uh, my name is Simon Bella. I'm a PhD student with uh, Philippe Bella at uh, LSE, and I'm going to talk about uh, the potential of history matching uh, for lens first model calibration, uh, the work we've done with uh, Nina Raoult and uh, other collaborators. So uh, we know that the uh, lens surface model uh, needs uh, uh, to calibrate uh, their parameters. And for that, we have a different approach. And the more classical uh, standard Bayesian calibration, where we define uh, a cost function and we want to minimize it. And for that, we could either use the gradient descent methods. But uh, usually, uh, we need to compute the gradient. And for that, uh, we need the adjoint of the tangent linear code. Uh, and it's not always available for complex models. Uh, and uh, other way to minimize the cost function is also to use ensemble methods, but uh, it could be really expensive as it requires a lot of uh, different simulation. So we wanted to explore uh, the potential of history matching as it was used to calibrate parameters of a climate model, which are more bigger and more expensive to run, and uh, that it works on a Gaussian process to emulate uh, the model. So uh, we are going to work on the ORCIDE model and uh, to, uh, uh, to calibrate parameters on this model, we have a system named ORCIDAS where we have this basic uh, for divar uh, equation, uh, a cost function that we want to minimize uh, with the two parts, the one that compares the observation and the simulation and the, the second that compare uh, an, a prior state with a new state. And for that, on this system, we have uh, two methods. We have the gradient descent method, uh, the method LBFGSB, or a genetic algorithm. Uh, history matching, it works uh, quite different. It's another philosophy. So uh, at the beginning, what you need is an ensemble of set of parameters. And for each set of parameters, uh, you will run using the real model, a simulation, and define a matrix. So matrix in history Story matching is just a scalar that you compute on the output. So it could be, for example, the mean of your uh, output, etc. And then you will build an emulator that links the parameter and this matrix. So in our case, the, the emulator will be a Gaussian process. Uh, and it's really uh, useful because uh, using Gaussian process, you have the prediction for a new set of parameters of these matrix, but also uh, a standard deviation that could be interpreted as an uncertainty of this prediction. So once you have built your Gaussian process, you can completely full fit the parameter space by running a, 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 ton, a, a million of uh, new set of parameters. And you will compute for each new set of parameters what we call the implausibility matrix. So basically, you compare uh, the predicted matrix into a target matrix. So the target matrix could be computed, for example, in observation. But basically, it's where you want the model to go. And uh, for that, you will also take into account two kinds of errors, the error of the model and the observation, but also the uncertainty given by the Gaussian process. So it means that when you have uh, points that you are not certain, you will take that into account. And you will keep all the points that gives you an implausibility less than a threshold. So usually you set this threshold to three for the three sigma rules. And, and this uh, define uh, n roy space. It's a subspace of parameter. It's for n roy for not rule out yet. So it's a subspace uh, of parameter where you should find a set of parameters that gives you consistent simulation uh, given your uh, target, uh, what you set as objective. So this is called a wave, and you can run several waves uh, to reduce and reduce your parameter space. And at the end, you do not have uh, one set of parameters, but you have a subregion where you should find all the set of parameters that gives you a consistent uh, simulation given your observation. So it's really useful to explore uh, the parameter space, to see uh, equationality, etc., but also to compute uncertainty. Uh, as you could select several set of parameters and see how it evolves in the future. So we wanted to compare these uh, two uh, or three methods. Uh, so for that, we worked on the ORCIDE model, uh, and uh, we, do, we did uh, uh, a twin experiment. So it means that we selected six parameters uh, that we know well, uh, and we took the default value of these six parameters to run a simulation using ORCIDE on the Fontainebleau uh, site, which is in France, for the year 2005. And we look at the uh, net carbon flux and the latent flux. 
we just had a small noise on the simulation and we use this uh, simulation noise as fake observation. And now we want to see whether the Bayesian calibration or history machine are able to recover the same simulation and also recover the same parameter uh, used to generate this fake observation. So as uh, Bayesian calibration uh, is uh, deterministic and uh, we will work with Ensemble uh, using history matching, we will do 200 optimization uh, using different priors and uh, compare the result uh, with the 200 point took from the Android for history matching. So here we have box plot of RMSD. So the gray block plot is uh, uh, the prior value of the parameter, so without any uh, optimization. And we have uh, in green and blue uh, the reduction of this RMSD after uh, optimization and uh, 200 points took from the uh, Enroy uh, for the history matching in purple. The opaque block plot, ah, sorry, the opaque box plot uh, are for the calibration year, so it was 2005. And we also check the result on the evaluation year between 2006 and 2009. And what we see basically is that uh, Beijing calibration perform better because the LMSD uh, are closer to zero. Uh, but we also see that uh, there is a real change between the evaluation period and the calibration period for the Beijing calibration, which is not really or less the case for history matching. So what we see here is that history matching do not over calibrate the model. Uh, it, it, it overfit less than Bayesian calibration. And this is something that uh, it is really interesting uh, because we do not, uh, we don't want to over calibrate our model on a uh, calibration year. So now what we could check is how we can upgrade the result of history matching. And uh, what we did here, we use the RMSD between uh, the simulation and the observation as metric to emulate. But this is not the best uh, uh, metrics to use Gaussian uh, process uh, because it's a uh, quite noise. And so the Gaussian process uh, uh, is really difficult for Gaussian process to converge and reduce the uncertainty. So what two we minutes. have done here, sorry? Uh, two minutes. Uh, what we have done here, I use uh, several metrics uh, where, which are more physics based and uh, focused on simulation. And uh, what we see is that uh, just after one wave, we really focused on to calibrate uh, some part of the simulation. So uh, another uh, advantage of historic matching is that it's really easy to uh, to mix all these metrics and do a multi criteria optimization. So this is what we have done here. Uh, so we have a time series of net carbon uh, fluxes and latent fluxes. Uh, the gray spread are uh, the prior, uh, the color uh, after optimization and the black line is uh, the observation. And at the end, we see the history matching using uh, nine different metrics. And we see that now the, the RMSD box plots are really close to what we get from uh, the Bayesian calibration, but still with this capacity to less overfit. And we also get on the left uh, the, a, a lot of information on the parameter space. So what we see is the gray part uh, represents uh, the rule out space and the color is the Android. So we see the relationship, for example, between the two first uh, parameters and uh, which parameter were, uh, was really constrained and not. So the uh, take home messages are that uh, history matching looks really promising. It overfits less, it provides a lot of information. Uh, it's easy to use uh, multi criteria and to quantify uncertainty. Uh, recently, we look also at other metrics and the so-called uh, lavender, the 4D ensemble bar, and uh, we use the same experiment to implement it. So we have here the result of uh, the 4D ensemble bar. Uh, it's 10 experiments that converge all to the same point. And what we see is that it converges to the gray line, but this gray line actually represents the, 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 the error uh, when we uh, by, between the true simulation and the noise true noise simulation uh, so when we add the noise on the true simulation so we really see that uh, our uh, bayesian calibration methods overfit because it start to, to it try to calibrate on the noise that the story matching explore the full capacity and uh, the full error and that this uh, lavender methods really calibrated well and uh, find the good uh, value of parameter so thank you for your attention and uh, you can check uh, the paper of uh, 
그래서 졸졸 뛰고 있는 거야. 